18 no spin challenge is gone, stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Misty Nicole from LadyPreferstoSave.com and today I am sharing with you a few things including my week 4 progress for my 2018 No Spin Challenge. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you a few announcements. As you all know, for 2018, my family and I are participating in a No Spin Challenge. This is not to pay off any debt, this is to fund some upcoming savings uh, accounts that we would like to fully fund and some endeavors that we have within our five and ten year goal system. And so we will be using this year's challenge to see if we can rework some of our savings goals, how we continue to spend each week at the grocery store, and how I am personally as an influencer and digital entrepreneur putting a money aside for my own health care expenses, retirement, and things of that sort. So before I share with you this week's video, I also wanted to announce that for the month of February, along with several other wonderful channels, I will be participating in the February No Spend Month Challenge as well, which I will incorporate starting this week into my videos. And so I wanted to share that the wonderful Esty from Love Esty actually originated this tag, and so I will share all of her information in the description bar below. Also participating is the Varied Mommy channel, and so I will also put her channel in the description bar below. Esty is a wonderful mother of three. She is great at meal planning and meal prep and shares a lot of awesome minimalist perspectives on her channel and so she has a lot of things that you need to see and so I definitely recommend checking out her channel because you will definitely want to subscribe to her as well. Be sure to let me know if you would also like to join in on this challenge. Considering that not spending is not just about what you're not spending on but really taking the time to create dedicated goals within your budget and to really assess why you want to save. Knowing your why is always your first step. And even though we are now at the end of the first day of February, there's no time like the present to get started. And so we would all love to have you along, definitely on this journey, especially in the month of February. And so now I will be sharing with you my Facebook Live that I recorded earlier today about this week's successes and victories and challenges, as well as tips for how you can save at the grocery store this week. So without further ado, here's that video. Hello everyone, my name is Misty Nicole from theladyprefers2save.com and thank you so much for tuning in for another Wednesday Ways to Save live Facebook broadcast. And before I start off anything, I just want to apologize. I'm a little under the weather with sinus pressure and an impending cold. So if my voice sounds a little husky or I sound nasally, I apologize. Also, the weather has been very erratic in my area. And so my box lights for filming were not sufficient enough today. So you're going to see that light right over there. And I do apologize for that as well. And with that said, thank you again so much for tuning in. And today's Wednesday Ways to Save will again be broken into two segments. First, just a refresher of the 2018 weekly progress that I've had for my No Spend Challenge, a few announcements, and then a few tips. So I'm going to get started right now. And as you come in, if you have any questions, please leave them and I will address them after the broadcast in the comments section of the video. Thank you again for watching and I'm going to get started now. Okay, guys. This week, I want to announce that I am super excited again that I did not have to spend anything extra in terms of my no spend challenge, aside from, of course, groceries, gas for our vehicles, and, you know, just general living expenses. I didn't purchase anything extra or eat out or anything like that. And I would say going into the one month mark for this challenge, things have gotten a whole lot easier. And I'm really excited about that because you know, initially I had reservations about doing a full year challenge because as you know, I've done monthly and seasonally challenges in 2013 and 2015, but nothing as extreme as a year challenge. And I do think it helps that I'm not just paying off debt as I did before now that we're a debt-free family, but that I'm actually working towards specific savings goals, I think really makes a big difference for me. 
coffee. And so I am super excited to have had two full weeks without any major Murphy Law inspired shenanigans in my house. And so I am super blessed to be able to say that. Now, with that in mind, I want to share that once again, we do have, for anybody who's interested, a 2018 No Spend Community Accountability Group that I will link the information um, below in the description bar when we're done. I also have a brand new page that I wanted to let you all know about as part of the Lady Prefers to Save fan page. I actually started a new group this week. It is a ladies accountability group. And it's for people who may not be on board with the 2018 No Spend Challenge, but really want to delve in and have a community of like-minded people that they can share ideas off of. This, of course, is a judgment-free area. Whatever your current situation is in terms of your finances, you are by all means welcome, no matter your walk of life. I would love to have you come on in and let's share how we can better our finances and just live a better, more successful, debt-free life together. And so I will link that below as well. And as always, I am still doing the No Spin Challenge. We're doing it on YouTube. There's actually a few ladies and I that are doing videos through the month of February. I will list that information down below as well. So now for this week's tips, I, I really wanted to delve into something that's still a lot, you know, I don't even want to say a little, it's a lot controversial for a lot of people. And that is zero waste living. And I want to share that one of the biggest reasons that I became a zero waster and have a zero waste home and maintain a zero waste standard within that home is was first and foremost to save money. The actual environmental efficacy came as a secondary note. Now that's very controversial to say that, but it is the truth. And I have found that zero waste living ultimately saves me quite a bit of money on my grocery bills. And so I wanted to share some of the ways that I use zero waste living to save at the grocery store. So that's what this week's broadcast is kind of going to be about. And some of the ways that I do that is that number one, I shop at single use stores. And by that, I mean, I don't shop at box stores that have multiple departments. For example, say you were to go to a Walmart superstore you may have your children in tow and it might be a financial difficulty for you that week to be able to get your household supplies and groceries and have to go by the toy department so one of the ways that i save money as a zero waster is to go to an actual grocery store and that's a store where you're not going to have toys or tires or clothes i find that just going in to those stores saves me a ton of money of course i use you know, the list system. I make a list of everything that we need. I match it with rebate apps before I go. But I know that in going to just the single use store, I'm going for a specific purpose to buy specific items. And that saves me a ton of money. I also know that if I go to a single use store, I'm not going to be tempted to buy as many random plastic throwaway items that you would if you went to a big box store. And that includes stores like Costco, Sam's Club, and BJ's Wholesalers, because you're going to have those promotional items on your end cap that they're trying to liquidate stock. You're going to be tempted. And even if it's $1.81 or 81 cents or $2, you probably don't need it. And you don't need it in that much of a bulk. And so for me, I avoid temptation. I buy less plastic, I stay on budget and on target by going to stores that have a specific purpose where I don't have to buy extras that I don't need. And I don't have the feeling of guilt and having to tell my family, no, we're not gonna get this because it's not there. And so the second way that zero wasting helps me save at the grocery store is by the use of reusable bags and produce bags. And this has been a game changer for me. I actually use a myriad of canvas bags. Now, some of them are promotional bags that I receive as an influencer from companies, and some of them I have purchased on my own. But I find that you can go to stores like Home Goods or TJ Maxx, and you can get plain canvas reusable washable bags for under $3. These bags are awesome. They really last. You don't lose your produce because it fell on the ground, or you don't have a glass jar shattered because it fell in a plastic bag when the plastic bag handle broke. 
I also don't have to make an extra trip back to the store to return plastic bags that I'm not going to use. And so that to me saves a ton of money. And the best benefit of using your own bags is that it sets a limit on the amount of things that you buy. For example, if I go into my local grocery store with three bags and a list, I know that each of those say 16 items that I need are gonna fit in one or two of those bags. And I leave one extra bag just in case there's a stock up item that I know that I might want, or if I have larger items such as pineapples or papayas or things like that, I can accommodate that in, but I'm not gonna buy more groceries than are gonna fit in those bags. I'm not gonna buy more produce that will fit in my reusable bags. And so going into it, if it's not gonna fit, I'm not gonna buy it. And that has saved me a ton of money because you can often go into the store and when you don't have to worry about the number of bags that you're going to bring in with you, you can buy more stuff, you can accommodate that. But if you go into it with, I will not fill up more than this square footage right here, it's a game changer. I actually will set my bags straight into my cart. I will fill them up. I will then go to self-checkout and pull an individual bag, the items out of said bag, put them back in it. Very easy, very self-sufficient. And again, you save a ton of plastic in the process, which is a total bonus. The next way that I save money at the store is by buying unwrapped goods. And by that, I mean, if I buy bread or rolls or you know, a donut or a pastry or a knish, or if I'm buying carrots or celery or lettuce or beets or radishes, whatever it is, I wanna buy it without plastic. Most goods that come in plastic are going to have a markup because they are bagged, because someone had to physically bag them for the transporting process. You're actually gonna save quite a bit of money by not having your produce bag. For example, in my area, if you buy a bag of either baby carrots or organic carrots that are in the plastic, it costs $1.99 a bag for a one pound bag. If you were to buy unwrapped carrots, they are only 42 cents a pound for unwrapped carrots. You can almost get three pounds for the same price depending on you know, the size of the carrot. And so you're gonna save quite a bit of money. You're not gonna have that excess plastic and you're gonna have a better quality product. Sometimes when you buy produce or bread in plastic, you are not going to be able to see every blemish or issue with that product. And that way, if you can physically pick it up and see that this is something that you wanna buy, you're getting that hands-on experience and something else over time is you'll be able to identify what good produce looks like. You'll be able to tap on a melon and know that it's ripe or just to feel something and know if this is, you know, seasoned for whatever your cooking need is. So I love doing that. I also love that when you go to the bakery, if you ask for in many stores, unwrapped bread or Danish, you can sometimes get a discount because you actually are going to pay upwards of nearly 25 to 50 cents more for them to put it in the box and put the label on it versus putting it in your own produce bag, taking it to say self-checkout and then pulling up the PCU number and, and entering that yourself. You're gonna save money just by doing it yourself. And again, sands the plastic. Another way that zero waste living will help you save money at the grocery store is by shopping the perimeter of your store. And I mean that if you go into most stores, you will immediately face, say, your produce department. And then you will go through to where your bread is, and then say your back aisle would be your meats, um, your dairy, cheeses, and then you would have, you know, say, eggs, and then you would, you know, cut your right and then go, you know, towards your registers. Now, if you are going on the perimeter of the store, you're going to notice a lot of things. Health food sections tend to be on the perimeter of the stores, as does the dairy that you need or even nut milks or whatever that may be. Um, your organic meats, if you eat meat, are going to be in that same section too. And you're going to cut out the main culprit of overspending in the free world, and that's processed foods. You're not going to have as many canned or sugary cereals or products of this sorting because you got to consider that bulk shopping tends to be on the perimeter of the store. And even things like 
beans or dried goods, if you go on to specific aisles in the center part of your store, they tend to be closer to the end caps. The further you get into the center of each aisle, the more processed the food is going to be. And you're gonna pay a premium for that service. So if you just avoid shopping in those particular areas to begin with, you're not even gonna be tempted. You don't have to take your kids down that aisle. It's gonna save you a huge amount of time and fiasco. Just don't even go down them. Just shop on your perimeter. And if you have to go into those aisles, park your buggy on and near your end cap. Take your purse with you. Walk into that aisle and pick up that one item. Go right back out to your cart and you're gonna save some money. And if you have to go into it, you go right into the aisle you know, with your kid and your purse, then you get your item and you get right back out. You're gonna save a ton of money. The more you browse and meander through the middle of the aisles, you're going to spend more money. Just don't go. You're saving plastic, you're saving money, you're saving time. And most importantly, you're saving your health because how many processed foods are really that good for you? And my final way that I save with zero wasting is by not buying convenience foods. I don't buy single serve products. I don't buy single, say snack packs or drinks or pudding cups or any of these kind of items because I have a rule at our house and that is you can have the food that you enjoy. You can have comfort foods, but the trick is you've got to make it yourself. So instead of buying convenience foods, partition part of your spending each week or each, you know, half month or month when you go to the store to buy ingredients to make those foods. And then you go home and you have them readily available or say you make them in bulk and then you can put them in individual mason jars and have them ready to go. I find that if I make my own convenience foods, I save in a couple ways. And that is I'm not paying a premium price at the store. I can control the ingredients and the toxins within my food. I know that my food is a higher quality because I'm making it myself. And as someone who has food allergies, this is especially important, or if your children do. I also love the fact that I will save money at the store by not buying convenient foods at the store and instead taking a snack with me in the car. I will take a tea or a chai or some veggie sticks or something with me that I will have before I go into stores if I have to go to multiple stores. And that way, if I'm not hungry, I'm not overspending at that store. I'm not gonna have a whole bunch of single use plastic products that I either have to pay TerraCycle to get a re you know, receptacle to mail somewhere or they would normally have to be thrown in the trash because a lot of those containers for single use products actually contain vinyl. And in many places in this country, vinyl is not recyclable and more and more, glass isn't either. So a lot of those products are not going to be able to be disposed of properly. They're overly expensive. They're full of toxins and you really don't need them. So guys, those are the five ways that zero waste living has helped me save hundreds of dollars at the store. I get to be a more efficient shopper. I get to not have the struggle of telling, you know, the little one, what they can't have because we're just not even going to go there. We're not going down that aisle. We're not looking at sugary cereals. We're not looking at small animals who started a beauty shop product line, no poly pockets, none of that. We're not doing that. And so we're going shopping, we're getting food. And instead of worrying about what we're not going to buy, we're going to talk about when we're in store, what we are going to buy, why it's healthy, why we're eating it. And I love the fact that you can show your family the proper way to grocery shop. And that is a skill set that your kids will benefit from decades to come. Be that parent who doesn't have to yell, but spends their time instead explaining how living a healthier life is a more affordable one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you tuning in. Again, after the broadcast, I will be putting the links to those groups and my YouTube channel in the description bar below. Within the next couple hours, I will be releasing a new PDF printable for you guys on how zero waste living will help you save at the store. That will be on the ladyprefers2save.com slash printables. I will put that link in the description bar for that as well. And so now I wanna ask you this, if you have any specific questions for zero waste living, saving at the grocery store or any financial success problem that you would like a workaround for, let me know and I can craft a video or live broadcast for you in the weeks to come. And as always, thank you again for watching. Please be kind to yourself and to others and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in.
right, everyone, those are my five tips from today's Facebook Live video on how to save at the store using zero waste methods. I hope that they will inspire you and have you rethink how you are saving at home in the most ecological and efficacy prone ways that you can. Now, before closing out this video, I wanted to again leave a few shout outs to some channels that are creating new and better ways for you to save all in different kind of formats. And the first, of course, again, is Love Esty. She is an amazing mother of three. She is a fellow minimalist, and she has awesome meal planning and meal prep ideas on her channel that you should check out. Also, I want you to check out Melissa from the House of Plaid Fuzz. She is a fellow minimalist, a mother. She is an influencer and blogger, and she is also on a path to being debt-free. So definitely check out a lot of her posts, especially on Instagram, I will link below. She has a great way of plugging out how much her savings will be for the month in her planner. So that's something that you may want to see. Also check out Roxanne from The Guy's Life. She is an awesome mother of four who is also like me on the Body Boss Method health plan. She actually introduced me to that. And she has a lot of great family videos empowerment, uh, motivation, enthusiasm, kind of centered focus. She also is doing more and more recipes and meal planning and meal prep videos, which could save you money. Also check out Christopher from Worcester Pilates. He is an amazing instructor. He posts a lot of wonderful, wonderful plant-based recipes that are very easy to follow, very affordable, and incredibly delicious, including one of his latest videos for Buddha bowls that I will be having again this evening because they are that amazing. So definitely check out all those channels below to help you on your own debt-free journey. Now, I want to also ask, do you have any reservations about starting a no-spend challenge? If you do, I would love to be able to answer them and to see if there's any way that I can personally help you. I'll also be linking in the description bar below some of my Facebook communities that you may want to join including my 2018 No Spend Community Accountability Group. I also have a secondary community, which is the ladies who prefer to save, which is not about not spending, but about being more of a savvy saver. So all are welcome. Please check that out. As well as my Facebook fan page, where I post articles and deal savings and a lot of varied things each day that may be able to help you stay on budget this season, especially in February. And with that, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, leave me a comment, and as always, please be kind to yourself and to others and have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you so much for watching.